Watches and Wonders 2024 has been and gone. What are my thoughts and why have I been left a bit underwhelmed? Let's get into it! Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Yes, I'm back, ready to give my review of Watches and Wonders 2024. Firstly, I need to say a huge thank you to all the guys at That Watch Guy London who once again wanted me to be part of their team to fly over to Switzerland and take in the sights. If you haven't already subscribed to them, click the link in the description below. <laughs> So yes, 54 brands were on show at probably the biggest watch trade show in the world. It's kind of like the biggest shopping mall you've ever been to. And times it by five. An enormous big shell of a building is transformed for one week into a luxury watch mecca. That out of the way, let's start with a couple of rants, shall we? Now I don't see myself as press, okay? Just an enthusiast that likes watches. Pretty biased if you ask me about Seiko's. And Casio! Yes, I speak my mind and I don't come from a neutral position. Press got to showcase and show off the new watches four to five days before us public punters did. By the time we got to Watches and Wonders, the releases were all old hat. Watches and Wonders should have been a surprise to everyone at the same time. Yes, bring the press to a day or two before the public opening, but don't let them release any footage until the public days. Okay, so a few things you have to realise when you go to this event. One, you're going to do a lot of walking. Make sure you've got a pair of trainers on or something very comfortable. You're going to do at least 13 to 15,000 steps. Two, I wouldn't go on your own. I definitely recommend going with a friend, even better, a group of people. There's quite a lot of serious faces around there. I definitely wouldn't have wanted to do this on my own. And the best times I had were chatting with Gavin, Kaylee, Spencer and Paul. Number Number three, go for the freebies. You've got your flight ticket, you've got your ticket to Watches and Wonders. Why don't you make the most out of it? And if you work hard enough, you can get yourself some lovely freebies. Tote bags, booklets, lattes, chocolates. You know, we are in Switzerland. Cocktails. If you work hard enough, you won't have to buy any food for the whole day. And number four, don't go to the big boy straight away. As soon as the doors open, guess where everyone's walking to? Rolex, Tudor, Pat it cue straight away. Slow down. You'll find that after lunch, things get a little bit calmer and you can rock up to any booth and have a good mooch. A lot of people were asking what watch I was going to wear. Was it going to be a Casio, Minu Doxa, Marolex? I chose a Swiss watch that will be four years old this year. And it was, of course, the Tudor Black Bay 58 OG. You would not believe how many compliments I got from this watch. Yes, a watch that came out in 2018, Tudor really did break the mould with this 58. And ever since then, they've been trying to find the sparkle, glistening, magic sprinkle dust ever since. <coughs> So, my second year at Watches and Wonders, what was I expecting? Well, last year, there was a massive amount of hype because it was the first proper one back. Yes, it was the year of the integrated bracelet sports watch and everyone was jumping on the bandwagon. And to me, the majority of watch releases last year was more sports related. The booth that we all agreed was the best one of the bunch last year was IWC. Everything was set in the 70s and you had hundreds of staff waiting to talk to you about all their watches. Even though I was pretty fed up with that sort of look, I probably would have taken it again for what we did have this year. And that was precious metal dressy pieces. The brands were basically showing off just how good their watchmaking is. This year IWC released complicated dress watches that you wouldn't know were very good until the year 2100. We've heard of perpetual calendars. Well, this is an eternal calendar. Basically, it understands where there are three years where there isn't a leap year. You want that in the watch? Of course I respect the craftsmanship. But it didn't buzz me. Patek released the denim range. I mean, what the heck? For someone with more money than sense that would never properly wear jeans in the first place, well, there's a watch with a pair of jeans for you. Vacheron Constantine came out with a lovely overseas, which was gold with a lovely green dial. But again, on that theme of 
precious metals dressy showing off. Going into the Roger Dubuis booth is always fun. Their whole theme is, yeah. is around turbions, basically. Movements that are suspended inside a cage. And what's better than one turbion? Two! Show off! The one watch I wanted to see out of this whole event was the Tudor Black Bay 58 GMT. No Rolex fans, you did not get your Coke GMT, did ya? But Tudor did! Exactly, for anyone that thinks Tudor aren't working with their big brother Rolex, you are not thinking with a full set of screws. This is a watch I seriously would like to own. I think it's only 12 and a half millimeters thick. Looking at the pictures and the photography of this watch, I thought the gold may be a bit too much and didn't really fit with the red and black theme on the bezel. However, I think it does work very well. That GMT was sitting in a cabinet, you couldn't touch it, which is another one of my Ugh, gripes. But from this Coke release from Tudor, you know we're not going to see two things. One, a Coke GMT from Rolex ever. And two, a Pepsi GMT bezel on a Tudor Black Bay 58. Because the Black Bay GMT will go kaputski. We have got to talk about Rolex. I think its biggest release probably was the 1908 with a guilloche pattern dial. Ridiculous amount of money. Plus anyone getting one in the next year. Good luck. So one brand I never thought I'd go in again, but did, was Tag Heuer. The booth was fantastic from the outside, a giant screen showing the making of their new watches. Tag are really starting to listen to their customers and watch enthusiasts, but bringing back the Carrera chronographs, the skipper, that was an awesome looking watch. And I think it's only gonna take another three or four new films from Ryan Gosling before everyone's wanting a tag. Um, could you just click that like button please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. Now the brand that most YouTubers are not talking about right now, and I don't know why they're a brand that weren't at Watches and Wonders last year, and they're British. Watches that are assembled on our soil. Was Bremont, a new Bremont and all. They had the first booth as you came in from the entrance. And let me tell you this, they had the friendliest staff that had the most energy and the most amount of time for us punters. They are no longer a brand all about pilot's watches. Now we spoke to a lovely guy called Andrew who talked us through the history of time right from 1583. Obviously we know Bremont hasn't been around that long so I tried to speed him up a couple of centuries but the gist of Bremont is they want to be known as a brand that does land, air and sea. Now we have what looks to be a compass but if you take a look at the negative space there is still the propellers there and yes I admit to you a compass logo is quite generic. I mean, I mean, they're, they're a dime a dozen, aren't they, you know? And a lot of people were calling out the logo, saying it looked like the Stone Island brand, which is basically a compass as well. But to me, I saw through that. It's what it represents. It's a brand that more watch enthusiasts are gonna like. What Bremont released this week was the Terra Nova range and the Supermarine range. Watches that are inspired by the old days, but have been made to a very high spec and made with 904L steel. That's the same as Rolex. Yes, it is. But these are a set of watches that are definitely a competitor to the likes of Tudor, and the Swiss mid-level entry luxury watch. And the price of them are more in line with Tudor now, around the 3,000 mark, to make someone's eyebrow go, mm. having chatted to Andrew and getting a good sense of where Bremont see themselves in the next 10 years, well, I'm, I'm quite excited for them. I will definitely be reaching out in the future to get my hands on some of these Terra Novas to see whether they feel and wear just as good as they look. Obviously, there were many, many other brands out there, but my overall thoughts of Watches and Wonders 2024, a little underwhelmed. Last year was full of excitement. We didn't know what to expect. This year we did, and it felt like all the gimmicks and fun that we had from last year was taken away. It also felt like there were less staff, also less watches. What I got from 2024 Watches and Wonders was the watch market is definitely not dead. Unfortunately, master craftsmen, high complications, Holt Horology is luxury. And with luxury comes precious metals, platinum, 
gold, that top tier market where people are spending 50, 100 to 200,000 pounds is still pretty strong. But the market between one and 10,000 pounds has definitely shrunk. And you can see the brands like IWC doubling down on their high complication precious metal dress watches because that's where they see the market going. I felt a little out of my depth, more so than last year, but I talked to a lot more people. And I gotta give a big shout out to everyone that came and said hello. Listen, I'm a guy that just likes watches. From your 10 pound Casio to your Vacheron pocket watch with 57 complications. We're not in the market for that Vacheron, but it's nice to see it sometimes, isn't it? For anyone that wants to go next year, I definitely recommend it. It's an experience, but maybe next year, switch your phone off for a week and wear trainers. You know, you're gonna do a lot of walking. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you want a bit more of the Mad Watch Collector, click there and join. If you want some merch, of course you do. Click down there further, oh, I dropped it. Click in this description here, that one. But if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you click this one? Oh, sensational, obviously. It's one of mine, isn't it? <laughs> Come and be a part of the Mad Watch Collector sort of loop, you know, YouTube loop. Go on, click it, it's fun, go on, click. Click it!